got a fantastic history here, the Travelers' Championship. Azinger, Watkins, Nicky Price, Greg Norman, Phil Mickelson, a host of great champions. Every summer, the PGA Tour returns to beautiful Cromwell, Connecticut for the Travelers' Championship at scenic TPC River Highlands. The Hartford area community and local golf fans turn out by the thousands to show their steadfast support. This is their event. Travelers puts on one of the best tournaments all year. Travelers and the fans, you can't get better than this. This is honestly one of our favorite stops on the tour. Thank you, guys. The Travelers in the Hartford community are committed to growing the charitable impact of this PGA Tour event. They have invested in a state-of-the-art first tee facility in an effort to promote the game to future generations. The main thing is the nine core values. Those have taught me over the years just to be respectful, you know, be responsible about me and persevering through everything and having confidence in all that I do. The Travelers is also a longtime supporter of the Hole in the Wall Gang, a camp for children facing serious medical conditions. For me, it's been one of the few places I can actually like be myself, like entirely. There's, you know, nothing you have to hide, nothing you have to fake. You just come here and you're loved for who you are, you know, like no matter what. The Travelers Championship, supporting the community, celebrating the game. Test, test. Good. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're having a great day, and we have yet another uh, very interesting and compelling visitor that I'd like to introduce to you. Um, I think all of you are aware that Travelers is one of our premier sponsors on the PGA Tour. Uh, they took over as title sponsor up in Hartford in 2007. Last year, in 2014, they signed a 10-year extension through 2024, uh, which had a, a positive impact on us in the marketplace, as you would expect. Uh, all of this is due to the leadership and vision and support of, of our next speaker. Uh, the video you just saw just touched on the impact that the Travelers Championship has had in that area of the country uh, with the leadership of Jay Fishman. Uh, as CEO of St. Paul's Company, uh, he led the acquisition of the Travelers in 2004. Since that time, they made it through the downturn, the financial downturn. Uh, unscathed, really. At the same time, some of their competitors, such as AIG, imploded. They are the only insurance company that is part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and their performance has beaten and surpassed the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. Jay recently stepped down as CEO for health reasons, but he continues on as non-executive chair. Uh, those of you who have been, uh, had the opportunity to be around Jay, uh, perhaps hear him speak about the PGA Tour, about uh, how to use our platform as a vehicle to help people, you know that he is uh, one of the most upbeat, uh, motivational, and inspiring individuals that you'd ever want to run across. He is without question uh, as good a partner and maybe the best partner we have on the PGA Tour, and, and with no question, the most vocal and articulate supporter of what we're all about, what our relationship means, and what the future can bring. I'm delighted to introduce to you our great friend, Jay Fishman.
that wasn't a bad introduction. I've had better, but it wasn't. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. Ah, oh, come on. Good afternoon, everybody. There you go. Now you're talking. By the way, we were the first company to sign a 10-year extension on the PGA Tour. We led. <laughs> We, we lead, we, we don't follow. And, and that's important, as you do, by the way, as all of you do. So um, first, my wife Randy and I, I don't know, oh, right here. We thank you for inviting us down to just speak to you for a little bit, uh, give you a perspective of what it's like to be a sponsor. Uh, but I would, I would tell you, it starts with, so Tim was kind about, well, kind of about a few things, but, but a couple that I would, I would sort of correct. First, you all should understand that uh, our commitment to the PGA Tour is institutional. And that's important because that's really what you all want. To the extent you rely on personal engagement, that's good, but people come and go as I'm about to go. And so what you're really looking for is institutional engagement that embraces what you do. So I would say that, yeah, I may be the principal cheerleader, but you should understand that at Travelers, there are lots of cheerleaders who stand right behind me, convinced that what we do together makes an enormous difference. And then two, in respect of both the company's performance as well as what we've done with you on the tour, I've been fortunate to be, I, I, I refer to it as, to be the conductor of the New York Philharmonic. Uh, I got a lot of people out there who were terrific musicians. I can't play a lick. Uh, I get to put on a tuxedo and stand out in front and take all the credit, but there's a lot of people there I've been surrounded with who have enabled us to do what we do. Those of you who've had the pleasure of working with Andy Bissett, who's our chief administrative officer, and putting this tournament together, or Brian McLean, our president and chief operating officer, you understand the depth and the commitment that exists in our organization, not only to what we do as an insurance company, but to what we do with you as your partner. I, I love to share with people. Andy is our chief administrative officer. Uh, he's not cheap. I'll bet, I'll, bet Andy spends, I'll bet Andy spends about a third of his time over the course of the year directly related to this tournament. Not indirectly, but directly. And I'm talking about being out on the tour, talking to players, deciding on gifts, organizing Women's Day, you name it. You name it, there is no detail that's too small for us to be attentive to. And so our success, such as it is, is indeed institutional. And it is driven again by the partnership I have with so many folks. I, I, I say to Tim frequently, and I'm sure uh, he thinks I'm BSing him, when I say that we are so privileged uh, to be your partner. And you have to understand my perspective on that to understand how genuine that comment is, how it's not at all BS. People use the term brands all the time, and I find that word, well, sort of silly, because the notion of a brand implies something upfront, something that's, that's visible but not real. I, I think a lot differently about organizations. I think about the depth of their reputation, their reach, and what they do when they do things well. And we start off with that what you do, your reputation, your expertise, your excellence, your operational execution is just extraordinary. And as a business person, to have the opportunity to partner with you in doing good things for our community is an extraordinary opportunity for us. I will tell you that in that same financial crisis that Tim mentioned, I was asked by well, certainly those people thought they were important, important people asking me if this was the proper use of corporate money. My response was never defensive and it was always straightforward. I couldn't imagine a better purpose for corporate money than what we were doing. And so that gets to who we are a little bit as a sponsor and why I think, I, I hope for your sake we're not unique. I don't, unique really means one and only. I don't, I don't think we are, but I'm going to tell you, at least from, again from my perspective, what the model characteristics are, why we feel as passionately as, as we do. 
I, I have also said publicly about this event that we are a first-class company that aspires to do first-class things in a first-class way. That implies ownership. We own it. We, as the sponsor, own it. We're there. The experience is ours. It may not be it's yours also, but it's ours. If the tournament, in its, in its broad-based reach, if it does well, then we've succeeded. If it doesn't, then we failed. It's not, we're not absentee owners. We are there, we are on site, we are on scene, we're accountable, and we're responsible. Everything from quality of the food to the quality of the accommodations to uh, you name it. We, how many, how many uh, you would think, by the way, this would have been an enormous success for five or six years, we would sponsor a caddy party. Now, now this was steaks and an open bar. I, I would have thought with that crowd, the line would have been out the, out the front of the, it wasn't. Now, for, you know, for whatever reason, that didn't click, but a lot of other things do. And whether it's laundry and dry cleaning or Women's Day, which my life has been so instrumental in, or Men's Health Day, and all the different things that we've done, we own it. And this is just one person's view and observation. If you want to see if your sponsor own it, owns it, see who shows up on Sunday on TV. If it's the regional sales director from the Southwest Division of the Parts Manufacturing Company, they don't own it. They don't own it. If it's the CEO, they own it. And that's critical, I think. So that's one. Two, we are a hometown company. We have 7,500, 8,000 employees in Hartford, Connecticut. So embracing a local event was sort of a natural thing for us. When we first had discussions about becoming involved, there were other tournaments that were offered to us. We couldn't figure out the connection. To us, it was about being local and the impact that we would have on our community. Thousands of our employees dedicate, donate hours and time and money, by the way, to the cause. They all contribute. They feel, our employees feel connected to it. It's not a sales event, it's a community event. And our employees feel connected to it, and it matters. We support hometown charities. You saw a little bit of the blurb about the Home of Wall Gang Camp. What a spectacular Connecticut-based organization originated by Paul Newman to give kids who are really, really sick, really sick, to give them an opportunity to be away at camp with other kids and just be kids. When that was first organized, that was unique. It was one and only. And, uh, and so we, but we embrace a thousand other local charities too. Arts, philanthropic, all sorts of things that are, that are local. So we got a local company that's supporting a local event that supports local philanthropies. Now the local event this was a big deal. Hartford is, uh, is not Los Angeles. Uh, and, and it's a community that, that's had its ups and downs, gotten kicked around a little bit. And the community, broadly speaking, remembers the day the Whalers left. Most of you were too young in this room to even know who the Whalers were. But that's how long ago that was. And this was an event that was important to the community. They had tried to patch it together for a bunch of years in the community to keep it going. So the opportunity for us to come in and be involved and be engaged presented itself. And so then, then we had the, the, perfect, the perfect triangle, the local company, the local event supporting local philanthropies. Absolutely perfect. Now, to justify it, <laughs> I'm sort of pleased my board has never really asked me what the return on investment is. I, I've also said many times, I don't think we sell one insurance policy because we hold that event. But I'm also sure we sell 100,000 because we hold that event. There's no way you can justify it based upon marketing to your customers with the cost that it is. You could fly the customers anywhere you want and entertain them royally. The indirect notion of bringing them to an event doesn't, doesn't hold up. The marketing dollars, we could run advertisements on television and get more effective coverage than we do. But when you add it all up, when you add up what it does for the community, what it does for the reputation of our company, 
and what it does for the philanthropies that we support, I would argue the return on investment is infinite. I don't know how else you could actually accomplish that with an event that's celebratory. And, and we have begun over the years to think more and more about how we leverage that, how we do it even better. So uh, as an example, you all know, though maybe you don't, but in, in each uh, event, there are honorary chair people. And, and of course, it had been the governor and, and it had been the commander of the local sub-base and the president of the Kiwanis. And so last year, two years ago, we decided, actually it's three now, we decided to five uh, co-chairs employees of travelers, each of whom was a veteran, representing their individual branches from the service. One of them had been the nurse that flew up to the, or down, I'm not sure which it is, to the South Pole. I'm sure you remember that story about the, the other nurse who had breast cancer and was treating herself until the thaw occurred and they could get a plane in. So she was, a, anyway, the, the embracing the community, the employees, the vets in the place was really quite remarkable. And then we started thinking, last year about the, the ring effects. You know, we drop a pebble uh, in a lake and, and the rings keep, keep moving out. So if you could put this up. These were our four uh, co-chairs from, from last year. I, I love these stories. So these are four young people, each of whom is doing something philanthropically in our community that matters to them. So Brittany Vos lost her father when she was five years old to pancreatic cancer. When she was eight, she started a Sunday morning walk at the golf tournament. Pay money, you can walk the golf course, you have some pancakes afterwards, and you go home. She has now raised from that walk, she's now a, a college junior, she's now raised over a quarter of a million dollars for the Lust Garden Foundation by taking people around and walking them on the golf course. The woman, in the, the woman, the, the, the girl, I think she was eight when it started in the upper right, Mackenzie Page, a friend who developed cancer. A friend went off to hold the wall gang camp. Mackenzie became involved and committed in doing something called the pumpkin challenge. Carve a pumpkin, bring it to her house. They display it. You put $500 into the kitty to put your pumpkin up on the rack. and Everybody comes and watches. She's raised over $100,000 that way for the hole in the wall gang camp, again, leveraging the connections. Chase Scrubus lost his father last year, was deeply involved in golf with him. Chase now collects old used clubs, cuts them down, donates them to the first tee for kids to use. And again, the first tee is one of the philanthropies that we support. And I, I thought how really extraordinary it is to begin to think about, instead of the, the, the honorary chairs being the people of note, that they be people who do good, people who do good. And, and to use that tournament, your tournament, our tournament, in every which way we can to engage with the community. It really has been uh, an extraordinary venture. So the next, the next chapter are really uh, two things. One is to continue to pursue this kind of thinking. We have we have the attention of a good part of certainly the golfing world for a week and a venue that can be used to do good things. How can we do that? How can we take that time and that moment and leverage it in ways that help the community beyond just buying a hot dog at the, at the event? That's, that's important. But now how can we do, how can we do it even, even, even greater? And then Secondly, and something that I'm particularly proud of, is that we have institutionalized this. One of the things that I do think distinguishes travelers, we, we are an ensemble cast. We, we, our business is too complicated for any one person to have all the answers. And so the senior team, we talk about everything. That doesn't mean it's consensus, but people's views and perspectives and input in our business really matter. And so while I may have been the original, well, Andy and I, truthfully, you may have been the original sponsors of this, now 
whatever it is, eight or nine years into it and 10 years on the horizon, the institutional engagement around this event is extraordinary. You see it all year long. It's not just the week. There's the media day. There's a fundraising event in the middle of the winter. Our calendar turns around this event, and we use it in ways to do good things for the community. So do we sell any more insurance policies? Probably not. Is it the only way to entertain important clients? I can figure out a lot better ones. But I can't figure out a way to leverage an organization and a community together to do it the way we do it, the way we do it together. So I come back to how extraordinarily fortunate we feel, how extraordinarily fortunate we feel to be able to partner with you in doing this kind of work. Sometimes you'll think you're in the golf business. When you start thinking that, I suspect you're thinking the wrong way. You're really in the community engagement business, and golf happens to be the vehicle by which you do it. And I believe that as strongly as I believe anything else, strongly enough that we'd make an effort to come down here today and just share with you why we are so appreciative of the effort. So I know I'm on a short leash. I think that's 15 minutes, and which, by the way, for me is like really short. But I'm, I don't know, Tim, you want me to take a question or two or whatever, whatever you like, whatever you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, over the years, when you uh, when, when in the headquarters from time to time, we'll go through, talk about our sponsors and kind of kind of talk about the differentiation between sponsors in terms of what they do, how they approach it, the kind of people in their company that get involved, what works, what doesn't work. Anytime you get to Jay Fishman. You don't have to say much. Um, there isn't anybody that, number one, can equate to what he has built when he just referenced community engagement. But also, uh, nobody articulates it and what that model is all about like he does. So again, Jay, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. So now, Jay, uh, I mentioned earlier he had stepped aside for medical reasons. He was diagnosed with ALS in the last couple of years. Um, the PGA Tour extended family has been impacted by a ALS in the past. We lost the PGA Tour player Jeff Julian. We lost PGA long-term PGA Tour caddy, caddy Bruce Edwards to this terrible disease. Uh, so. We knew a little bit about it when Jay was diagnosed, but when Jay uh, came to us and asked us whether we could help with his effort to fund uh, a, pro a project known as Answer ALS that he was driving to really upscale the research uh, it, to deal with this terrible disease, uh, we were absolutely all in. So I'm um, delighted to be able to announce today that based on the work that all of you have done, the PGA Tour has committed $500,000 to uh, Jay's effort in this regard. And Jay, we're happy to help. So, um, uh, I'd like for Jay to talk about this for a minute, or however many, and there is no <laughs> limit, uh, because uh, he, he came at this challenge the same way he has everything else, with intensity and focus and energy. Um, so we're pleased to help, but I can't articulate it. He can, and I'd like for him to share, share with us a little bit more about Answer ALS. Thank you, Tim. So First, my apologies to all of you for sitting here. You now 
understand I wasn't being rude. I, I can't stand at the podium anymore. So thank you for letting me sit here and, and speak with you. Uh, one of the amazing moments as we were putting all this together, this is the biggest, Answer LS is the biggest basic research project ever undertaken to try and understand this, this really dreadful disease. It, it, it's attempting to go at it much as they have in the world of cancer, the theory being that it's not one disease, but it's actually many diseases individually driven by the genetic and protein makeup of, of, of you and what your disease is. One of the challenges with ALS is that they test a drug. It works on a few to level out the symptoms. It doesn't work on all the rest. So the theory, again, much as in cancer, is let's go back to basic science and figure out what the, what the genetic dynamics of this disease really are. The wonder is that this is technology that didn't exist 10 years ago, that couldn't have been funded or financed five years ago. And now in the last year, we've managed to put a group of people together. We've raised $20 million, an astounding sum of money, $20 million. And, and the goal is to do genetic genomic testing, proteomic testing. 2,000 patients in the United States, and that will have st statistical significance to begin to see are there patterns that can be identified and therefore hopefully uh, identify treatments that are, that are more relevant. And when I called as, as it was coming to, like it came together actually fairly quickly, I was surprised. I, I, I reached out to Tim, and I think it took two days from the ask uh, to Tim saying yes, he and Jay both, by the way, uh, Jay Monahan deeply, deeply committed and just said yes. And I, I, I can't tell you how that made me feel. I would be, I'm actually at a loss for words. I've, I've become a, a shameless fundraiser. I ask, I got nothing to lose, you know. I got nothing to lose. I have become a shameless fundraiser. And I'm not used to having people saying no to me, and it's happened some during this. You guys were unbelievable. You stepped up in, in such short order. Now here's where the dynamic of reputation really matters. So there's a press release. Press release is coming out from Massachusetts General Hospital, Johns Hopkins, and Cedar sinai So three pretty good medical institutions. Two, we list, we list the contributors. And I want you to know the PGA Tour is listed as one of the principal contributors. And I can't tell you the credibility that that brings to the project. That was my comment before when I talk about, not brand, but about well-respected organizations, deep sense of reputation, and, and what you all did for, for this effort it was worth 10 times what you put in, because it brought tremendous credibility uh, to, a, to a really uh, serious thing, and I'm uh, deeply appreciative for it. I, um, I said to Tim earlier today, my perspective has become uh, you either stay involved or you stay in bed. And that's, and that's sort of my world has become quite binary. And the only reason that I'm stepping down as CEO, I'm staying on as chairman, is I simply don't have the energy anymore to be the CEO by my standards. It probably works for somebody else, but not, but not for me. So we've got a new CEO coming in next week, Alan Schnitzer, who loves the Travelers Championship, feels committed to it, been part of the thinking of it and couldn't be more pleased and proud with how the succession has gone in our company as well in our community. And so I just want to say thank you to all of you for your effort on our behalf. It really uh, has made an enormous difference and uh, it gives me great strength every day, seriously, every day to get up and keep going. I've got you know a new mission and I'm not going to let anybody down on this new mission as I didn't let anybody down on the old mission. So. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for letting me tell a little bit of the story and appreciative for all you do for us. Thanks. <laughs>